Hello and welcome back and that's right there is a brand new Synology on the block if you didn't see it on the title card already that'd be a bit weird wouldn't it it is the Synology DS1821 plus a new 8 base solution from them and I'm sure there's a graphic about here on screen that's right we'll link to PDF and this PDF did detail a lot of the things which let's be honest if you're reading this on Reddit or you're looking at it in the comments and you've been looking at buying a brand new Synology and maybe you learnt about the DS1621 Plus here, chances are you can you already knew most of these specs and like a number of us you were just waiting for confirmation. This system is a brand new 8-bay that follows in the footsteps of the DS1819 Plus. Now this new NAS it is Ryzen powered. Let's get that straight away off the bat. It is exactly the same CPU that we've already discussed on the channel. It is the Ryzen SoC embedded uh, processor for servers, the V1500B, a quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor. This CPU, it is an x86 um, 64-bit processor, which means stuff like Synology Virtual Machine Software, Tick, stuff like Surveillance Station, Tick, Synology Moments, again, or Synology Photos, you guys in DSM-7 in the future there, or all of the myriad of applications from Synology are all available here. So what is it about this device that we should care about? Well, as I say, that CPU, we've already done significant testing with it using the 1621 Plus in previous videos, and it has held its own very, very well. Uh, this system also arrives with four gig of DDR4 ECC SoDim memory built into the base there, and it can be upgraded all the way to 32 gig of memory, which is great to hear on this eight bay device because a lot of people moving away from things like Dropbox and Google Drive and stuff like that, and they want to go to a kind of sub no subscription service. Uh, the Synology 8 Bay is kind of where the a lot of business make that first step, because it's a good level of storage capability with eight SATA bays, each of which support the very latest 18 TB Seagate Ironwolf and WD Red drives with 20 TB drives on the horizon, but also it can be expanded as well. This 18 um, um, total storage system is eight bays that allows you to add two DX517s either side for a maximum, as mentioned, of 18 bays of storage. And that's why a lot of businesses migrating away from cloud or at least creating a localized source working in conjunction with the cloud via synchronization um, will choose an 8 base solution. It's one of the main reasons that the 1813, 1815, 1817, and 1819 that came before it were such popular desktop devices. You're not overly reliant on a rack mount solution and going straight in with a nice, solid, compact 8 bay desktop. Now, that memory inside, ECC, again, great to see it, error code correction, meaning that any um, integrity issues that are noticed during the double checks on system of ECC memory will be healed. Now, on the subject of healing, it's worth highlighting this, of course, is going to support not only DSM 6.2 with 7 around the corner, but also the likes of BTRFS with the benefits that it brings to the system of file self-healing, easier shared folder creation, and lower resource-consuming snapshots in the background but it also arrives with support of Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR which again great stuff and the reason these two are here is we've got obviously support of S um, of Synology Hybrid RAID being so fundamentally useful to Synology buyers with that fluid RAID system but also the idea that this system allows support of traditional RAID configurations like RAID 5 and RAID 6. An 8 base system allows you to have that two disc um, safety net there in the background and of course SHR is available as a two disc version in SHR2 as well. You can even go for triple parity with some of those smaller configurations but that's not really relevant here. So this 8 base solution also benefits from SSD caching. That's right, much like a lot of the new uh, 20 and 21 series from Synology, this 8 bay benefits from M2 NVMe cache bays inside each of which allow you to install uh, super fast NVMe and bestow their high performance and high IOPS um, onto the larger, arguably slower and more cost effective hard drives in the main array. And again, in things like virtualization and shared drive use, 
um, large databases. That SSD caching is hugely beneficial. We've already done a lot of featured testing on the benefits of those NVMe SSDs for caching. And I'm no doubt we're going to be covering that subject very, um, very, very soon. Again, in a slightly different way with DSM 7 and the benefits of that brings with Synology Drive 3.0. But the um, 8 bay that we're looking at here, again, the current iteration of it, uh, the DS1819 retails for about 950 quid right now, including the VAT. And again, that does fluctuate depending on where you shop around. And I think this new 8 bay is going to be bang on that price as well. Maybe a little bit more, uh, 20, 30 quid, just like we saw with the 1621 Plus. This 8 bay also benefits uh, from PCI upgradability on the rear of the system. We can see that it has that PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slot that allows you to install um, single and dual port network interface upgrade cards. So again, you're looking at two port 10 Gs. You're even looking at 20 and 40 GBE cards as well. And a PCIe uh, Gen 3 times 8 slot will allow up to, on that single lane, 8,000 megabytes per second throughput to the main host controller board. So again, if you get one of those Melanex dual port 40 GBE cards, although you're going to struggle to saturate that level of uh, bandwidth with only eight bays, you might well approach it with the two expansions connected via eSATA. Um, it is worth highlighting that you can't install NVMe SSD cache cards inside that bay because the system already has uh, M2 NVMe slots inside, so putting that card inside, the system will not recognize additional bays. Um, but also, if you install uh, a single or dual port 10 GBE card and it's the combo card, like the E10M20, you can use the 10 G, but you're not going to be able to utilize those NVMe slots there. So don't waste your money. Just go straight into network interface upgrades if you're interested in that. Now, a number of you may sigh when you hear that this is a 1 GBE equipped device. It's got the four LAN ports, just like its predecessor, and each one of those ports is one gigabit Ethernet. And of course, link aggregation or port trunking is available here, or load balancing, another way of doing it. Um, so again, you can get up to four GBE bandwidth on it, but I know a number of you are less enthused about 1 GBE at the moment. We're kind of hoping that Synology would jump on 2.5 or 5G, or even 10G as standard, as we saw with the XS. Um, but there's still no avoiding that PCIe upgrade slot does open the door to greater connections down the line. And now there are four USB 3 uh, ports on this device, USB 3.2 Gen 1 or 5 gigabits per second USB, one on the front, three on the rear, predominantly uh, or almost exclusively in the case of Synology, reserved for uh, external storage devices, for uh, backup and another tier of your backup strategy, although there are some USB uh, compatible devices available. There's not a huge number of them. You can assign USB ports to a VM in Synology Virtual Machine Management, but even then, you're not really going to use them in that way. And of course, there are benefits to it with regards to um, having high availability as well. But again, not really fashion for that. And I think the majority of these are going to be for storage utilization. Now, the architecture of devices, you've probably already seen and assumed the chassis is near enough identical to that of the DS1819. They've mainly changed the inside, not the out. Um, and if it, it is in any way comparable in that architecture to the likes of the DS1621, I think you can assume that the memory is not going to be soldered. I think it will be the two available slots in the base of the device, just like we've seen before. But again, this is based on um, preview PDF information and therefore not hugely um, confirmable at this stage. The system will support all of the Synology applications you would expect. And again, that includes Synology Drive, Synology Office, Synology Chat, Synology Mail, um, the entire collaboration suite from them, but also Active Backup Suite um, and those improved um, CMS controls too. So again, huge amounts of benefits here, and this system is going to be hugely ready for DSM-7 as well. Um, it arrived with three years of manufacturer's warranty, as you would expect from the Synology Plus series from them, which can of course be extended to five years with the warranty upgrade. I believe the EW201, but it, I might be wrong there, it might be the 202. Hopefully on screen it will tell you the right information there. But this has been everything we know so far about the Synology DS1821+. Plus. I would take a 
punt and guessing if this system's going to arrive in 2020. It's going to be right there at the tail end. We don't have a confirmed release date right now. And as soon as we do, I'll let you know. And of course, we will see how it compares with its predecessor very, very soon. But click subscribe if you want to learn more about NAS and more information about these new releases as they come. And click like if you've enjoyed the video so it helps me understand what you guys want to know the most and and do click the links in the description both to nas compares where there will be more updates about this system and others as we know them and of course the guys at span.com the nas experts with more than 25 coming on the 30 years in the biz of data storage knowledge and free pre and post health tech support yes it is a plug but it doesn't make it not true thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time